Hello and welcome to Music Made Simple. Lesson 17, Time Signature. In lessons 15 and 16, we have learned that notes on the bass can be divided into groups of twos, threes, fours, and whatever we want to do. Now, how do we indicate that this particular music has groups of twos, the next one has groups of threes, another one has groups of fours on the staff? We do this by a sign called the time signature. And that's the subject of today's lesson. Please revise lessons 15 and 16 or watch lessons 15 and 16 if you have not watched it already. Time signature. In lesson 16, we saw the examples of the usage of bars for three different songs. In the first one, which is presently in view, we observe that the quarter note or crochet takes one beat and that there are four crochets or quarter notes in each bar. In this second example, the eighth note or quiver takes one beat and there are six of them in each bar. The third example showed a half note or minim to be one beat and four of them within each bar. How do we determine what note should be one beat and how many beats are to be in a bar? The music composer is given the latitude to let performance know exactly how this is to be done by using the symbol known as time signature. This symbol is placed at the beginning of the staff. It announces in advance of the music what to expect in terms of number of beats in a measure and which note is to be used to represent one beat. Recall that there are eight major types of notes as learned in lesson 11. By definition, time signature is a fraction-like figure that is two figures, one written on top of the other like a fraction, placed at the beginning of the staff. It is also known as meter signature or measure signature. The lower figure indicates which note is to be used to represent one beat, while the upper figure indicates how many of these beats are inside the measure or bar. Examples are 2-2, two, 3-4, two, 4-8. Four, four, Note here that because they are not fractions, I did not call them 2 over 2 or 3 over 4 or 4 over 8. No. They are called 1 by 1 and 2-2 two, two is called 2-2, two, two, not 2 over 2. That's the way to call it. Now let's talk about the lower figure. What does the lower figure indicate? Recall that the semi-brief is the whole note and other notes are fractions of the semi-brief. A crotchet is one quarter of a whole note and hence is a quarter note. Whatever number is at the bottom of the time signature indicates which note as a fraction of the whole note will take one beat. So, a lower figure of one means the whole note itself is assigned one beat. Example, four one, three one. Although this is not in common usage. A lower figure of two means the half note or minim is assigned one beat. Example, four two, 
three two. A lower figure of four means the quarter note or crotchet is assigned one beat. For example, four four, three four. While a lower figure of eight means the eighth note or quiver is assigned one beat. For example, six eight, three eight, nine eight. A lower figure of 16 means the 16th note or semi-quiver is assigned one beat. Example, 616, 916, and so on. And we can go on and on and on using the other notes. But by far, the lower figures mostly used by composers are 2, 4, and 8 because they are the most practical. What about the upper figure? The upper figure tells us how many of the notes indicated by the lower figure we can find in each bar or measure. When you add together all the beats values of a full measure, you get the time signature. For example, if you find three quarter notes in a bar, the time signature is thus three, four. Now let's go and observe this from the examples we have given. Let's go to the first example. We can observe that the indicated time signature is 4-4 four, four, as shown. This means that the quarter note is one beat and we can find four quarter notes in each bar. The four quarter notes can be in any combination of say four crotchets or quarter notes as shown or two half notes, or one half note and two quarter notes, or one whole note, which is equivalent to four quarter notes. You can also have it in form of eight eighth notes, 16 sixteenth notes. You can also have one half note, one quarter note, and two eight notes, or any other combination. The bottom line is that the addition of all the notes in any measure must sum up to four quarter notes. In the second example, eight as the lower number indicates that the eighth note is one beat, and the six on top means there must be six eight notes or quiver in a bar or measure, in whatever combination. As you can observe here, there are six eight notes in the first bar, six eight notes in the second, in the form of two dotted quarter notes. There are also six eight notes in the third bar, and six eight notes in the fourth, in form of a dotted minimum, which is equal to six quavers. In the third example, the time signature is four two. The two at the bottom indicates that the half note is one beat and the four at the top shows that there must be four half notes in a measure. Here the first measure is an anacrusis, an incomplete measure. The second bar has four direct half notes. The third bar has a dotted whole note which is equal to three half notes plus an additional half note to make a total of four half notes. Note that the first half note on the second staff is a continuation of the last three notes of the first staff. In essence, the last three notes of the first staff and the first note on the second staff make a complete bar. The same is applicable to the last three notes of the second staff and the first note of the third staff. Also note that in this particular bar, there is a dotted half note, which is one and a half half notes plus a quarter note, which is half of a half note. So together, the two of them make two half notes. You can then add the remaining two half notes to make a total of four. Double bars and time changes. We learned earlier that the double bar is used at the end of a piece of music. Another use of the double bar is being considered here. 
Sometimes the composer may want to change the time signature within a piece of music. Just before the time signature is changed, a double bar must be placed on the staff to signify the end of one time signature and the beginning of another one. An example is shown. In this example, the first section has three, four, and there are three quarter notes in the bar. But after the double bar and the new time signature, four, four, there are four crotches in each bar. An example of a song is shown. In this song, the time signature in the first two staves is three, four. This changes to four, four in the third staff. In this lesson, we have learned that time signature is a fraction-like figure that is put at the beginning of the staff that tells us which of the notes will be assigned one bit and how many of such notes are to be found in a bar within the piece of music. Next lesson, we are going to learn more about time signature because there are several types depending on the complexity of the music. That's it for today, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe by clicking the red button below the video in case you have not done so, so that you can continue to get updates of new videos as they come out. And also, if you have enjoyed this lesson, please click like. Until next time, God bless you.